like boiling down to 24 hours before the party. I haven't slept. I haven't found a new venue. And I literally happened to walk into this place called Mojo's. It was a big teen venue. I thought it was going to be pretty good. So within four hours, we'll really strike a deal between some negotiations, do a 50-50 split. And this time I signed a contract. So lesson number two is pretty much learned there, or, and I don't have to explain that, you know, sign your contracts. Now in the meantime, we have over a thousand kids who think we're holding a party at this Eclipse nightclub place, and only 24 hours to send them to the right venue. We literally only send out one single message on Facebook announcing the venue has been changed, and amazingly enough, not a single person showed up to Eclipse nightclub, but every single person from our event page showed up at our new venue called Mojo's. People were lined up outside the club until 11.30 at night. It was huge party. Let me show you, let me just show you a picture here. That's actually the party right there. When the ball dropped at midnight, we literally rushed people inside for free. We couldn't even get paid on them because we wanted to get them in to midnight. And, but we still made 10,000 bucks in just one night after the event split. It was funny because the guy that you know, owned the venue Mojo's didn't even want to book me in. After the night, he's like, so we're available January, February, March, April, May, June. It was available the entire time. So I was addicted. Uh, I had my first taste of literally like the adrenaline fuel of business success, and I was completely hooked. Now, remember, everyone thought that Facebook was kind of for kids at the time, but I mean, if you just look at how powerful of a tool it was just for my small business at 16, it got me thinking that this awesome system could really start to fill events. And so I started my next business, which was throwing parties every single week. And I used Facebook to promote to fill these events, like over and over and over again. We had parties every single weekend. Now, I want to switch focus here for just a second, and I really want to, um, you know, call a kind of the parents on here. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys have, you know, kids on the call. And I just want to be honest that, you know, most of your kids probably have absolutely no idea what you do. Well, I was kind of like one of those kids. I mean, I knew my dad was a businessman. I knew that he traveled a lot, and I knew that I went to a private school and ate filet mignon, and he drove around in a Mercedes. I knew that we were blessed, but I didn't really understand why we had those things. Um, but I kind of wanted to find out what he did. So one day my dad actually calls me up and says, you know, Austin, I'm speaking at a seminar today. And I'm like, whoa, hold on, hold on. I said, you're speaking at a seminar. I said, that's kind of funny, Dad, because, you know, you're not that funny. I said, you're not that good looking. And I don't know if you could speak it for like 300 people, you know, like that, that, that's interesting. But anyway, long story short, I actually ended up going. And to this day, my mind was literally completely blown from seeing my dad speak for the first time. I mean, he, he crushed it from the stage. It was probably like the most inspirational and passionate talks I've ever seen him do. And it kind of made me realize that, listen, I want to get into the seminar game. So lesson three number there is that share with your kids what you're doing. Get them involved. Educate them. And see what it inspires them to do because it, it'll be one of the best things that ever happens in your life if you can do some stuff with your kids. So I had to figure out exactly how I could work with my dad because I wanted to go to these events and, and learn and travel the country and make money inspiring people. I thought it would be really cool. So at first I started selling web designs for like 500 bucks a pop. Now this is where I learned my really, really big fourth lesson is that if for one second you do not like what you're doing, you need to stop doing it and start doing something else. Life is way too short to spend a bunch of time like being miserable. It's just retarded. And so really no amount of money is worth the amount of time you're going to waste by doing something you don't like. And really, at some capacity, you're going to work for the rest of your life. So you might as well do what you're gonna. For, you might as well do what you're doing and enjoy it, and, and make money doing that. So I literally promise you that at least one percent of me didn't like doing websites, and it was more like ninety percent of me hated doing these things. I literally, oh my god, they were the worst things in the entire world. And so the lesson is that, and it's really like the biggest lesson I ever heard about successful people is that they ask different questions. So successful people ask different questions. Now. Initially, after I stopped doing website design, I quit that. I said, I want my dad, and I went over to my dad and I asked him, hey dad, can I teach people how to like market their products using Facebook like you do with those parties? And he came right back to me and said, you know, Austin, Facebook is for kids. I went to my dad a couple more times and I to continue to like, you know, do the website design and um, I, I kind of talked about it, but I didn't do it. And I, so I asked him again, I said, dad, can I teach people how to market their products on Facebook? Once again, he tells me, Austin, Facebook is for kids. And again, guys, successful people ask very different questions, and they ask them much differently than the average people do, but they also take action on those questions. And I was definitely not asking the right question at all, so I had to find a new way to show my dad how important it was to jump into the social media marketing game. So I went to my dad one more time, and I really had to realign my thinking to that of a successful person. And so I asked him something completely different. I said, that I would really like to market one of your seminars events on Facebook and promote it to my own people for the targeted campaign that I was going to pay for using Facebook ads. And I said, is that okay if we do that? Well, my dad had no problem doing that. And you know, it wouldn't hurt him at all. 
Well, literally 15 extra people show up to his event, and as a result, he makes X amount more in revenue that weekend, like five figures more revenue that weekend. And I literally became, you know, the official Facebook coach and started running my fourth business. Suddenly, I was throwing these parties on Friday, and then on Saturday and Sunday, I'd be speaking all across the country with my dad. And even today, I, th I still throw parties in Chicago, and I speak across the country, and I do a lot of stuff in Australia, and looking to do stuff in Singapore and uh, in the UK. And I, I work with coaching clients. And the biggest thing is that I love what I do, uh, and I'm not afraid to try something new, even if it means I'm going to fail. And I ask different questions all the time, and I share my story with every single person that I meet. And it's really what drives my personal company culture and the culture of how I do business every single day. Now, now that you know a little bit about me, and I, I don't know what you guys have been up to the last three years, but that's kind of what I've been up to, I want to dive a little bit more into some of the background information of this entire Facebook thing. Um, before I go into the whole online presence, you just need to understand some of the basics and, and really what social media can do for you. Just, just learn a little bit right here. So I'm sure you kind of know this stuff, but... Oh, shoot, how do I always, I always forget this slide. One of the most important things before we get to this is that traffic is key to your business. And if you don't have traffic, you have nothing. This is actually a picture I took when I was headed to one of my events uh, in Chicago. We had our, our live event here in April. And um, it's funny because I was going to the event and we got stuck in traffic and we couldn't get to the event. Like the traffic was so big. You want your websites, you want your business, whether it's offline or online, you want your business to look like this. And I don't care if you have the best sales letter in the world, the best contents in the world, the best sales page in the world. If you don't have great traffic and a great source of traffic, forget about making money online. Forget about making money at all because traffic is key to success. Now, Facebook launched in September of 2005 with this nerdy kid named Mark Zuckerberg who could not get a date. It literally grows so fast. It hits 100 million members in nine months. It's crazy. Today, it's got over 750 million plus users. And it literally, it now has about almost every single one of those people log in. There's about 470 million unique logins a month, but almost everyone logs in for like 55 minutes. The average group, about half of them log in for 55 minutes a day. Now, the crazy thing, and I think it's going to be faster. I mean, the Facebook estimate is going to be about, you know, 18 months before they hit a billion people. I think it's going to be way quicker than that. Uh, and the really the question is that, you know, could you imagine advertising with precision of just 1% of these people? And just ask yourself right now how many of your current or past customers, family, or friends are already in that database. And I guarantee you that some of these people are already within your business and they're in their niche and they're using this network right now to make a ton of money. Just think if that could actually start advertising with you and it didn't cost a single thing. I mean, do you really think that it would be worth getting just a little more exposure for like 17 minutes of your time every single day? And that's why my little, my six-figure incubator program stresses that importance of creating an active and engaged brand presence online. It's a self-perpetuating marketing strategy that it's only going to continue to grow. We're going to talk about that a lot later. But to cover point one is that why should you even have a strong online presence? You know, first off, the possibilities are totally unless you're literally getting free PR, you got advertising, you're creating a unique list of prospects. And literally, if you think about it, if you go to a trade show or advertise on TV or even use radio costs, I mean, you're not going to reach even the fraction of the amount of people that you could for a relatively affordable presence online. I mean, literally, you can simply turn chatter into cash, and Facebook is a great tool for you to start with first. All right, so why actually use Facebook? First off, it's available 24-7. You're not limiting yourself to calling your prospects during the day or emailing at an optimal open right time. You can target people during the holidays and on their birthdays without being obnoxious, insecure, or just out of context, and you can make people actually feel like they're part of a unique and exclusive group, and we're going to talk about that a lot, that actually wants to hear about your brand and your product. Secondly, you're going to have consistent, fresh lead generation. Literally, after you set up your opt-in and form in your site and you start getting some leads, you can get leads every single day without costing any money whatsoever. I mean, I think you can do better with Facebook ads and, and Facebook traffic and free forms of traffic online than you could ever do buying.